Hey friends, so today I am fixing some mistakes in the garden. I have some plants that are in some beds that have different lighting needs and I am going to move them around so that I can ease some of my garden anxiety and get on to some new projects. Uh, I garden in a city called Bernie right outside of San Antonio. We are in zone 8B. So if you live in similar conditions or if you just like watching garden videos, I invite you to stick around for today's video. Let's hop in. Hello, my garden friends. I hope you are doing well today. So today we're gonna do a little garden chat because I had some pretty significant changes that I had to make this week and making sure I didn't lose some of my plants because they were placed in the wrong location. So a few of the things that we worked on in the garden this week, I don't know if you can see, but I'm sitting at a table now that's here on the deck and I actually built this table um, so that me and my family could enjoy actually sitting out on the deck. Uh, Father's Day, uh, by the time you see this video, Father's Day will have just passed. So I've got some special stuff in store for Tim that includes us being outside. So I wanted to make sure we had somewhere to sit. And I'm actually really pleased with how it all came out. So I actually documented the process of me building this table over on my design channel. Ooh, excuse me. So I'll be sure to link it down below so that you can go and check it out. Um, but this week we had to shift some shrubs around in the garden because um, we had some plants that were placed in the wrong place. So last week when I gave you the full tour, I showed you down below where we had some hydrangea that were planted in a very shady area. And the area gets like dappered sun all day. But for the types of hydrangea that I had, it just was not enough sun. And then back here directly off of the deck, we had some camellias planted, some hostas, some ferns, and all of those plants were getting too much sun during the day. My hostas were really, really stressed out. Uh, my camellias started showing like leaf burn, and those are pretty expensive plants when I purchased them, especially the camellias. So in an effort to save my investment on both the hydrangeas and the camellias, uh, despite it being the very first part of June, despite our temperatures being almost 100 degrees, um, now I decided to make some moves. So my son and I came out late one evening and we dug up everything basically in this bed directly off of the deck and we dug up our hydrangeas down at the bottom and we switched everything around and I'm so glad we did because uh, my camellias just look like they are more relieved. My hostas, the leaves when we moved them were sticking straight up and now they're starting to relax because they're not having to protect themselves from the sun. Uh, we do have leaf damage on the hostas, but for what it's worth, you know, uh, they'll start to grow and as they grow out and push out more leaves, I'll cut the leaves off that have the damage so that they can grow beautifully in their space down below because I think that was the right move overall. So down in the bed off of the deck, in addition to moving the hydrangeas, and some of you might be asking, well, how they take the move. So I have a hydrangea, a firelight hydrangea that is the largest of all of the hydrangeas that um, is expected to grow. So I put it on the corner that receives more sun and she has been showing signs of stress, but not permanent stress. So during the day, the first day we moved her and I forgot to get footage of it, but I'll get footage, I'll insert some footage of what I mean if she shows some signs after I record this video. But the first day we moved her almost immediately, her leaves drooped. Um, and I guess you could contribute that to, you know, I messed with the roots and the way hydrangeas roots are formed from what I understand is that they have like little hairs that come off the, their roots that help them absorb the water. And because I messed with the root ball, 
and it's really hot, the water in the plant was evaporating faster than the root can take in the water. So we did have a little bit of a, a hissy fit <laughs> when we moved. But I will say every day she's recovered by the end of the day. I just give her a little bit more water. I actually am probably going to start backing off of the water and instead of doing it every day in like a week, I'll do it every other day just because this bed actually holds a little bit more water than the one down below. Um, but every day the stress gets better and my Limelight Prime has not shown any signs of stress primarily because in the corner where she sits, that sun does, she only gets about three or four hours of sun and it's late, late afternoon sun, so she's not getting the bulk of the sun like the firelight is. Um, we also planted um, two little limes because underneath the window, ideally back here, I would like the shrubs to kind of grow right to the brick edge where the brick edge is of the window. That way when I look out of the window, I can barely see like the tops of the plants and the blooms out of our bedroom window. And then the plants that are on the side can kind of consume that brick wall. Um, I think it'll be really pretty and it offers a really pretty view sitting off of the deck and then smack dab in the middle. We have an Autumn Empress Encore Azalea, which is the only evergreen shrub that I put in that bed. She likes sun, she gets quite a bit of sun um, throughout the day. A front plant it with a couple of flocks just to kind of fill in the spaces between the little limes and the azaleas until they grow bigger and then flanked on the edges with some uh, Aztec grass just to add a different texture. I'm still considering whether or not I'm going to add any other plants to the front of the bed. I think for now because we are smack dab in the middle of or going into summer where the temperatures are going to get really really hot I'm going to leave it as is and just kind of baby that bed so that the plants that with the shrubs that we've planted can really get rooted in. When I planted them, um, like ordinarily I would not plant at this time of year just because of the temperatures, but my rationale was if I don't move them, I'm gonna lose them. And I really didn't want to lose my camellias. They are my babies. They bloom these really pretty big red like dinner plate blooms. They almost look like roses. Um, and I didn't want to lose her, so they were pretty pricey when I purchased them. I, I purchased a three gallon pot for like 80 bucks. So versus losing my $80, um, you know, they're going to the shade. I figure they can handle moving to the shade and they seem to be happy. I haven't lost any leaves. Uh, the buds still look to be growing. So I think it was a good move. My firelight, I am hopeful that um, she maintains her recovery and she recovers so that she, cause that's the exact same spot that she was in last year. I think last year, because I planted it last year, like in July, almost August, it, I mean, it was hot, hot. Um, and I planted it last year to keep from losing it. So from now forward, we're gonna leave this bed alone. I actually really love the way that it looks and I think it's going to grow in beautifully. So because of that, they are where they are and they should do fine. And I can start to focus on other areas of the garden. So that was our little snafu this week, but we got it done. Um, we got the deck set and now I'm super excited. Now that the paint has cured, I'm gonna go this weekend to buy placemats and stuff like that. When I decorate it, I'll do it over on the design channel. Good stuff that happened in the garden this week. Our hibiscus holy grail omg they opened at the beginning of the week and they have been putting on a show like nobody's business i posted a short and i'll link to the short where you can see the flowers just opening up it is such a pretty sight and now that I know what type of space that I'm working with around the fig tree, I'm going to plant some what I'm going to plant in the fall around that fig tree. And then our Candy Crush Hibiscus from Proven Winners finally opened up and they're gorgeous. I am waiting on the day where the Candy Crush Hibiscus and the True Sincerity Roses are in bloom at the same time. And I even took a peek and see that one of my canna lilies back here 
is about to bloom and that bloom is like a really pretty red uh, mauve color it, it's just going to be gorgeous in that corner and I can see that corner from the window of my bedroom so when I open my curtains in the morning that's the first thing that I look out and see and I can't wait for like the next week or so for that to be what I wake up in the morning looking at so outside of that um now that we've got this bed mulched in, uh, our, our hibiscus is, are doing well. Some of the things I'm going to be working on this week are getting the grass out of these beds and remulching them. Uh, I'm probably going to plant some more hostas down below just because it's a shady area so they can handle it so I can kind of finalize. I want some hostas and some hookahs and maybe even some coleus. So I'm thinking about going in and really making that that bed down below a little more colorful. So when we look over, we have some color over there. Um, and then playing with the bed back here where the sugar crust hibiscus are so that I can clean it up and get it mulched out. We're a little behind on mulch, but I worked really hard at the beginning of the year, so I was super tired. Um, and now that I feel like, because that was worrying me, that was like giving me all the anxiety in the world. Now that I feel like we're in a good spot and all of our plants are happy, I can start to work on some new stuff in the yard, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's our garden chat for today. Uh, I'm really excited about where we are now. I'm super excited about the deck. I cannot wait um, for us to eat as a family out here for the first time. By the time you see this video, we will have done it. So I'll post a short uh, of how we get it set up. And you can see, <laughs> did y'all see that bird? OMG. So I have um, a planter that has like lemon balm and just like a couple of strawberries growing in it. And I let the lemon balm go to seed to provide some shade for the strawberries that are growing. And I've got some hummingbirds that they love the deck because we've got some tropical hibiscus and stuff up here, some really colorful stuff. And the other day I was sitting on the patio. As much as I love to be outside, like I cannot get used to like the bugs and the birds. And the birds are not doing anything but what birds do. But I had a hummingbird come over my shoulder where that lemon balm, lemon balm is and was messing with the lemon balm seeds. And she just like floated. I don't know if she was saying thank you or she was telling me how much she appreciated everything that's going on in the yard. But she just sat there and I mean like we looked at each other for like, I, it had to be like 20 seconds before she flew off. And I was so freaked out because I didn't know whether or not hummingbirds will attack. So I didn't want to make any like sudden moves because I didn't know what to do. Oh my gosh, but that's the joy of sitting in your garden. I love it. And I see it all the time, like she comes and visits when we're not out and then she'll like hover around in the trees. But these birds are, they get close. They get real close, but I guess that's a part of being in the yard, right? So yeah, that's our garden chat for today. Uh, I'm pleased. I do have a question though. We have like mosquitoes are going cuckoo bananas right now. So I need some ideas on how to treat the yard for mosquitoes. I actually stopped our spray service just because we have some veggies growing and I didn't want them spraying that stuff around the veggies. So I know that I can spray the house around the borders of the house with some pest control stuff. I have that coming, but I need to know what I can do in the yard for mosquitoes. So if anybody has any ideas outside of like the citronellas and stuff like that, the tiki, that's fine. But sometimes the kids are out and fire makes me nervous around the kids. I would like something that I could place out in the yard, whether granular or if I have to spray or fog, that would not be toxic to the veggies that we have growing. Um, even if I sprayed it just around the areas that, well, that's the whole yard because the kids play. I don't know. I just need ideas for mosquito control outside of like the plants. I have mint. I have lemon balm. I have some rosemary. I have our citronella burners. I'm thinking about getting the tiki lights that have the citronella in them. Um, but I would like to be able to like spray the yard where the kids are playing and stuff like that to help control the mosquitoes as well. So if anybody has any ideas, feel free to drop down in the comments and let me know. But that's it. 
I'm glad everything is moved over. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. And when we come back for our next video, we'll be doing some grass pulling and some more planting down below uh, to get that area set as well. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And I can't wait to see you in the next video.